Hello, and welcome to episode number four of Comic Centric. I am your host, Cruz, and with me again is our good friend, Pete. Today, we have a very special episode. It's our Mother's Day episode. Yes, Mother's Day just happened a few days ago, but I would like to celebrate our queens in their day of. And with that said, we're going to talk about comic moms and the BS that they have to deal with raising some of the most eccentric comic characters out there. Also, in our second segment, we have a very special guest. We have our intern's body soul's mother in the studio with us. She's going to be talking about her eccentricities and God only knows what more. So join us for this as we dive into Mother's Day special. And thank you for joining us again. And with the theme of our day, our Mother's Day special, with me again is Pete here. Uh, Pete. Starting off the bat, it's mm-hmm. Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. And you too. <laughs> Let me ask you a question mm-hmm. right off the bat. Yeah. Your mom. My mom. Do you love her? Of course. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does she love you? I think so. <laughs> but does he accept your nerdiness? Does she accept my nerdiness? I think, I think at this point, there's no getting around it. You know? No getting around it. So by think, force, he has to I think when I, I first really got into it, yeah. it was very like, oh. Okay, like, because we would go places. We would, we would go, like, we had the Hollywood and stuff. Yeah. And like, oh, going apples right there. Let's go. And she's just like, all right, 20 minutes. Like, she's very, like, you know, timeless, you know. Like, okay. And I think over the years, I did what I never thought possible and, and made my nerdiness my job. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I always had it as a plan, but, but my plan was I'm going to write. The, comic book. the greatest comic book ever. Exactly, right? <laughs> okay. And I was thinking, that's the only way you can make it your job. And right. Clearly not, you know. <laughs> so, but you know, honestly, though, and, and it, I don't mean it in a, in a bad way. Uh-huh. I think it, it goes for both my parents. I think they didn't, I mean, they were always like, they knew what I did. Uh-huh. And I think to the point like they didn't really understand it too mm-hmm. much, but it was just like, oh, you wish I comic book and this and that. I think it wasn't until Cape mm-hmm. that they were like, oh, it's this real. makes sense. It's real. This is this is not what I thought it was. Mm-hmm. And Well, um, you're running a major event at that yeah, point, right. you know? And I think at that point, they were like, oh, this is bigger than we thought. Like, mm-hmm. okay. Well, yeah. was it the first year or the second year they made the shirts? No, the, the, the first year. The first year. Yeah, the first year. And that threw me for a loop because those yeah. were really nice shirts and they went all out on that. Yeah. So do you think that was their way of saying, okay? Well, it was funny because I think it's funny because I didn't, they had volunteered uh-huh. to stand in the front of the, of the show and sell the shirt. Right. I remember that. And I remember thinking, oh, all right. Like, I guess. Right. Uh-huh. You know, and, um, and then I remember, like, I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. Like, mm-hmm. not, not that I didn't think they could do it. It, just, mm-hmm. it was just very, like, that's interesting. Like, they, they offered to do that. Did they plan it out or they just came like that? I didn't really no, they, they had told me, like, maybe like a couple of weeks before. Okay. So, you know, and I said, all right. You know, like, I guess. And then. The funny thing that I didn't expect mm-hmm. was that following day they were just like, "Oh, can we do this again? Like, we, we want to do this again." I'm like, "Oh, all right." <laughs> like they got into it. They got into it. Like I think my dad really got into it. We're like, what? I remember, uh, I remember going home that that, that night after the first show uh-huh. and being exhausted. I was right. freaking dead. And I walked. I was gonna go to sleep, and my dad was like, "Oh, let's talk about the show." And I said, "Oh, okay, wow. yeah." And he just, he was just really fascinated by the whole thing. That's your dad. What about your mom? No, my mom was really was really into it. You know, she was very like I tell you, she enjoyed selling shirts. You know, like at the at the show. You know, <laughs> and she had fun with these people. Like I, I had heard from people like um, she was laughing. I yeah, remember her joking around. Yeah, with people, like, just like, <laughs> and you, I, I don't know. Like I, I didn't know your mom like that at mm-hmm. the time. And yeah. yeah, I heard her laugh really loud once, yeah. and I was like, whoa, you know. No, I mean, I think and I think that's what really opened it up. Like what I realized, oh. He's not just selling comic books. This is a thing. This is a bigger, you know. At that point, though, we've been doing it, what, 10 years? More? At least. You know? At least, maybe more, you know. Because you've been selling comic books, like I said, from the comic shop, from mm-hmm. your car, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And and were they seeing you struggle and all that? I guess, but it was really like, I remember like, we would get into arguments about it sometimes. We're like, um, yeah. I remember early on, when I was doing a lot of uh, eBay stuff, mm-hmm. my dad would get 
annoyed because he's like, oh, you're always just on the computers and that. I was like, well, I'm putting stuff on eBay. And mm-hmm. he's like, oh, how long did that take? I'm like, well, I'm doing like 60, 80 things. And, you know, like it's yeah. a lot of work. Right? It's a full day's work you know? right there. But I think, you know, like I think, um, you know, that's not true. I think, I think once they, they came to my first recon day when I owned the store, uh-huh. I remember that was a big thing. They were just like, oh, wow, there's a lot of people here, you know. Yeah, and there was a lot of people, and I remember they coming in and just looking around. I remember yeah. they were just looking around, mm-hmm. and I kept on looking at them, and they were just looking around. Yeah, and I think at that point, I, I already, I pretty much thought that they already accepted you yeah. as the comic vendor yeah. guy. You know, yeah. as this is what he's going to mm-hmm. be doing. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it took him a while for that. No, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure they did, but I think I didn't. When I'm talking about the cape, I feel like that was the first time I saw it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, okay. The first time that I just kind of acknowledged it, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm not saying, like, yeah. oh, you know, they were just kind of crappy about it, but no, no. I just, I just feel like that was the first time that I, I, I felt that they acknowledged it, or they just like, oh, or I could see the twi- the turn of like, oh, this is not what I thought it was. This is, you know, this is something else. Yeah. Okay. He can do it. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Or, oh, this is a lot more than I expected. You know, like my my old, I have an older cousin, and she literally, she literally said that. She's like, "Oh, wow, this is way better than I thought this was gonna be." Oh. And I said, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> what were you expecting? You know. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully we can get to do that again, and yeah, we get yeah. to bring them along because. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that you know, the first year I made those shirts for the staff and all mm-hmm. that stuff, but they didn't show up with the, that box, and I was like, "My God, what is yeah. going on?" Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know about that, mm-hmm. you know, until they showed up with it. And I was like, hey, "Cool, yeah." You saw that shirt? I do, and it's funny because um, I forgot who sent it to me, uh-huh. but someone sent me an eBay link one, mm-hmm. and someone was selling that shirt for eighty dollars. What? On eBay. And I was like, "Wow, what?" <laughs> I think that's one of the. One that's the, a phobic one yeah okay and the, that's the first year one mm-hmm. and it's the only one that we sold out on no oh. like i have a few of the other ones i didn't get one because really? yeah i didn't yeah. get one i was uh, by the end of the day they didn't have any more yeah and you know me i like to get things at the end of the day so yeah. i don't want to be carrying it but mm-hmm. my bad yeah i know that one it was crazy because i remember i forgot how many we ordered but i remember thinking like oh this is too many this is too many and then no within like a couple hours or like, oh, like oh we're out of them Huh. Really? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. See, me on the other hand, I guess it was like I, I said. I grew up. I got comic books as a child. Mm-hmm. They gave me them, you know. But as like growing up, they would never see the value. Yeah. And so I never got any more comics from my mother. Mm-hmm. You know, I was raised by my mother alone yeah. at the time. Mm-hmm. Um. So well, at the time of now. Yeah. <laughs> but. She basically said, you know, it was pretty much a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Come to college when I started working at the comic shop. Mm-hmm. I won't remember. I, I won't forget, I should say. I won't forget the day my mom showed up mm-hmm. with my grandma. Oh, wow. And if you want to talk yeah. Mother's Day, that's my grandma. Yeah. She's the patriarch of mm-hmm. the whole entire family. And she didn't really know what the comic books were about. She knew of the li- libretas and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. the novelarias and all that. Mm-hmm. But she didn't know that. My mom collected those, you know. Yeah. My mom sold those, mm-hmm. you know, at one point in her life. She sold them off those green stands that were out everywhere and yeah. about. Mm-hmm. She had one of those places. So I, that's something I didn't know until later, by the way. Yeah. You know, it was actually more recently that she told me that. And, you know, so apparently it runs in my blood. Yeah. But that day she showed up with my grandma. And you know what I was doing? I was doodling on a backboard. Oh. Yeah. So they come in, they see me doodling, and and I'm surprised, and I start sweating, mm-hmm. and and my grandma goes and she looks around and she goes, "Oh, this is what you do," mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, "Oh man, she's gonna start going on me." Yeah, blah, 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 blah. She goes, "Oh, this is what you like to do." Okay, yeah, you keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, that's she didn't say keep doing it, but she goes, "Okay," and she kind of was looking around, okay. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, okay, what? Yeah. You know? <laughs> but I think that okay was like her saying, all right, you can you can do this. This yeah. is something that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. You know? And I, that to me, I didn't expect it. But to me, that meant a lot. Yeah. That okay to me and the family that doesn't really share much of anything meant a lot. My mom, well, she always knew I was a nerd. And she always knew that, you know, I was gravitating towards that. And I always came home with books and stuff yeah. like that. She, she you know, accepted it, mm-hmm. but she didn't understand it, yeah. you know, but at the same time, she did her own nerdiness. She, oh, yeah. she, you know, she read those books. Yeah, see, like, I, I think that's what it is. At the end of the day, um, 
when you really think about it, like everybody has that thing they nerd out about. Yeah. And even like, like to me, I was never a professional sports guy. Yeah. Like I never got, I never got the fascination of it. But that always fascinates me because, especially when we were in school, uh-huh. like like people that were into sports, I was like, oh, I'm fucking nerd. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you really think about it, like people that are hardcore professional sports, that's the nerdiest thing ever. <laughs> There's like, numbers. Yeah. That... <laughs> And especially people that are in the fantasy sports, oh, that's like ridiculous. But like, like, like I, I see, I broke this down one time saying like, oh, like people that wear jerseys of mm-hmm. their favorite player, or whatever, that's freaking cosplay, man. <laughs> like, <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like they're wearing the pads; it's not like they're wearing no, the helmet. But, but you've seen people like especially the basketball fans uh-huh. wearing the jersey and the shorts. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's cosplay. That's cosplay, man. Don't tell them that. You know what? I wish I could have told a bunch of people that do your cosplay. Well, you know what I mean? Like, but, but, but I'm saying, like, I think everybody is nerdy about something. Yeah. And even if it's something, like, it's not necessarily, like, um, what, do you, what do you call it, like, classified in that way. Uh-huh. Everyone's nerdy about something, dude. Even if it's, you know, I, I think... And that and that's why I don't understand why some people would be like, okay, if you're a sports guy, why are you looking down at the comic book guy? You know, mm-hmm. the comic book guy, why don't you look down at the sports guy mm-hmm. oh it's just dudes tackling each other i mean yeah. it's their it's yeah, their own it's, world yeah, whatever, you know? that's interesting but like i said it's funny because you were talking about how your mom used to sell yeah. books, basically the same thing which you were doing like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she would bring them home mm-hmm. and i would read them i you know i learned to read with comic books yeah. and i learned spanish yeah. reading some of those mm-hmm. vaquero novels you know i remember once when i went to mexico mm-hmm. You know, I went to Mexico at a young age, 10, 12-ish. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. But one of the things I bought over there was in Spanish, Ninja Turtles 2, oh, Secret of the Ooze. Nice. You know, yeah, yeah. and it was in Spanish. And I got to buy that in Mexico. Mm-hmm. And then I got to bring that home. No one here in the States had that. Yeah. You know, and to me, that was a freaking treasure. Well, yeah. My mom bought me that. Mm-hmm. You know, and she was like, pick whatever you want. I'm going to yeah. get this Ninja Turtles, even though this is a movie that came out in America, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. You know? But you know, she bought it, and and that you know, the world to me. Yeah, I don't have that book anymore. No, yeah. it's probably something. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, no, no, I think so this is something we talked about before. Uh-huh. Like, what do you think? Is I think we talked about this before. Like, like having nerdy parents mm-hmm. does that mean you're not gonna have a nerdy kid? You know what I mean? Because like, skips I, a generation. But not even well, it's that. But it's also like I think we talked about this before. Like, like. Most people don't like what their parents are like. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, like you don't like the same kind of music as your parents. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, and so, like, I wonder if it's, like, a high school, especially when you're, like, a teenager. Uh-huh. It's that psychological thing, like, oh, no. Like, so and so, my dad like that. Or my mom like that. Ah, I don't like it. <laughs> no, and no, it's true. You know what? Yeah. I'm a, it, my mom's music. Mm-hmm. Growing up, she played every day, every day. Yeah. Sometimes it'd be the same songs every mm-hmm. day, every day. I learned them, you know, even though I didn't want to. Yeah. But... I didn't appreciate that kind of music until mm-hmm. I grew up and started getting my own taste for music yeah. and then realizing her taste for music is not really that different from yeah. my taste of music. Yeah. All music talks about the, mm-hmm. uh, this, this, and that, and it's almost all the same, but all at the same yeah. time, very much mm-hmm. different. So I understood her more and I started listening to what she listened to back in the day. Yeah. And I started playing it myself instead of her. And then she would be like, why are you playing Leo Dan? Yeah. I'm like, Leo Dan's awesome. Mom. Yeah. What? And again, it's maybe around when I started working at the music store. Yeah. You know, I started mm-hmm. appreciating that kind of music more. Yeah. But again, influence from my mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, that's all we are. At the end of the day, we are the influence of our parents. Like, you know, like that's, those are our first teachers. Yeah. And then not just like education, but like just everything you learn, like you get your mannerisms, you get your freaking, you know. Yeah. Your parents have the food. It, it all comes from your parents. Well, they're, they're making it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> And I think I think that's the thing, you know. Where, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's all influence. Yeah. Influences from yeah. there, but then you, if you said if it's all influence, what about those guys that go anti that? Yeah, you know? well, I think, that, I think that's just a thing where like all teenagers are like rebellious, mm. you know. And it's funny because at the time you don't you don't think about it. Yeah, so I remember um, I I have a my, my sister turned eighteen in October. And when she was between 14 and like 17, mm-hmm. we did not get along because she was just she was a freaking terror, man. Oh. Was like, you know, and you couldn't say anything to her while you heard giving you an attitude about everything. And I was like, what the hell? And then and my, my parents would always be like, oh, well, you know, that's how you were. I'm like, I don't think so, but okay, maybe. <laughs> they remember it different. Right? 
And I think about it, I'm like, no, there's no way it was that way. And you're like, yeah, it probably was. <laughs> you know what? I know I was. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I know it was a bad, bad teenage son. But um, but it molded yeah. us into the people that we are now. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. <laughs> man. How do you think, like, a mother like Sue Richards handles situations oh, like man, that? dude. Like, I mean, that's a scary idea. But if you think about it, like, she could literally put a freaking force field in your brain. Yeah. And shut you down if you want to. You know? Franklin Richards, yeah. if you don't stop right now, I'm going to give you an aneurysm. Yeah. What? <laughs> literally, dude. Or just put you in a bubble. It's like it's going to space for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, comic book mothers are a whole different breed. It's funny, dude. We think about like, comic books. Okay. It's going to sound weird, but I think like, comic book mothers are more important than comic book fathers. Oh? Because, okay, think about it this way. Uh-huh. Um, the whole Batman thing. Okay. okay. Martha. Yeah. But we always focus on that. It's always the freaking, uh, the, the, the pearls. It's always like the, the pearls ripping. Like, we never talk about like, oh, your dad died too. <laughs> like, That's true. They always show the pearls it's falling. Always the pearls. Yeah. It's always like, you know, like, and he's always like, oh, my mom died. He's just, yeah. and Mama's like, boy. Yeah. You know, yeah. we go mama's boy. Mm-hmm. And huh. even like you go like, um, I can assume that. You go assume that it's Ma Ken. And like, Ma Ken is always like, Listen to your dad. Yeah, he's always coming back to to Ma. He's always, you know, like, yeah. and, but well, Ma can she's so freaking um understanding. Like he's like, I'm gonna go to space and find my real friend. She's like, All right, like you know, like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but you know. You say you watched uh, what is it, Man of Steel recently, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. There is a scene in there where like the dad's like, No, you go do this and yeah. you take him under the shed and yeah. take her and he I'm gonna go why? Yeah. Your dad yeah. being stubborn guy, yeah. you're super mad and you yeah. can't, you know. But the mom is like, oh, the dog. Why does she remember the dog? In the yeah. Place? <laughs> but it's just like, see, it's, it's like I always like this is a really good version of Pa Kent, uh-huh. and it's very like in the comics, he's, he's very important in Yeah. But I feel like they always use him as like, a, like oh, he died. Yeah, he died. Had a heart attack or like you know, yeah. you know and she's like, oh, really like, and then they leave Ma alone, yeah. you know, and she's still understanding, mm-hmm. and she still you know has this grace about yeah. her. Yeah, and, it's just, like, and like I said, especially in college, I feel like the mother figure is more important than the father figure. Like, like even like, look at the Spider Man. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, Uncle Ben died, and that shaped who he is. Uh-huh. But he he always was like, no, I can't do this because what would Aunt May yeah, think? You know, and it was always, Aunt May was very important. You know. Yeah, and she was he wasn't even the real mom. She wasn't the yeah. mom. She was the aunt. Yeah. You know, but she raised them. Mm-hmm. She was his mom for better or for worse. And, then, and like you said, really, like a Sue Storm, like <laughs> it's kind of messed up the thing. But she's kind of like a single mom because reason never there. He's, he's always like um sciencey, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> to contrary, she takes care of the kids and Reed yeah. and Johnny. Yeah. You know, I don't know about Ben, but yeah. at, least, at least those four for and sure. Not only that, like she's able to keep the most powerful freaking mutant in line. Yeah. Right. Or Franklin, right? Franklin, like, yeah. Cool. The kid could freaking make universes. And she's like, no, cut that shit out. You know? <laughs> well, you got to listen to your mom. Oh, you got to, right? You got to listen yeah. to your mom. What other good moms are there in comic books? Yeah. Right? Oh, man. I mean, there's a lot of bad ones. You know what I mean? like, oh. uh, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, you know, do you even look at, like, freaking, uh, say, in the Fantastic Four, like, uh, Dr. Doom. Mm hmm. He became Dr. Doom because he tried to bring his mom back to life. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That was the main catalyst of that, yeah. yeah. You know? Hmm. My just thing is, it's it, it really interesting. You know, how they, there's a lot more focus on the moms. On the moms you know? than, than the dads. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think there's a lot more focus on the moms. It's just they're usually in the background making sure everything stays yeah. together, yeah. you know? Making sure it's it's not you know, falling apart, the the... Atomic family is not mm-hmm. falling apart. Like, there was, it was actually a thing about like uh, they wanted to they rebooted Spider Man about ten years ago, mm-hmm. and one of the things they did was they got rid of Peter Parker and Mary Jane's marriage. Oh yeah, they said that the argument was they felt that like it made the, the characters boring. Oh, and that was weird because they had been married for a long time up to that point. Yeah, but then I remember reading an article about the argument against giving them a kid. Yeah, because they said like, well, and it was the it was the strange argument of like like oh well. MJ can't be someone's mom and still be MJ. the supermodel actress, you know. And I'm like, why not? Like, you know? isn't she like a foster mom right now? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. But it's, it's very like I don't know. It, it, 
there was a stigma maybe maybe but i think it's it's more of i think it's an excuse of like well i don't want to tell those stories i don't no. tell, you know i want to be i want yeah. to play with the hot supermodel yeah. mary jane you know? and, they, and they did a whole like alternate reality thing where they had a kid mm-hmm. and uh, oh may yeah well yeah. there's another one they did after secret Wars. okay well they had a kid and her name was uh anime it was anime right so shut up no yeah because it was named, she was named Anne. after um and Anna uh-huh. and Anne May. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Aunt Anna, another mom yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was a weird series because, like, so Spider-Man, they were in hiding because this guy was hunting people with powers. Mm-hmm. And then they had this kid who had powers. And so he had to, like, teach him not to use the powers. Oh. But eventually it was like, no. You know what? That goes against what Uncle Ben said yeah. and all that, right? You have responsibilities. Yeah. But then, like, it was a weird because like, people liked it. And uh-huh. then... It became like, well, we don't want to leave Mary Jane behind. So he built her a suit that mimic spider powers. Oh. So that the three of them would go out. And fight crime as a family? Yeah. Okay. And it was just like, I mean, I guess it's words. Like, you know, like, Very like, incredible. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, where is it now? Yeah. Like they, they, they mentioned it here and there, but not really huge. You mentioned evil mothers. Yeah. There's such a thing. Yeah, you I know, mean, like, mystiques. Uh, it was well, rogues. Yeah, you know, mom. That's always interesting. That's always interesting. You yeah. raised her, but yeah. they raised. He raised her in a way that yeah. she was still bad, yeah. but she came out good. Mm-hmm. How does that happen? Well, because he nearly killed. Uh, oh, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. Oh. <laughs> She's yeah. like, oh no, this is, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. That's true. You know, but like. Um, so yeah, I mean, evil moms are a staple. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Disney's, there's always the evil yeah. stepmothers, mm-hmm. and and those are always trying to cause some shit. I mean, these mothers are toxic, and yet yeah. they still manage to raise good kids. You know. I mean, I guess. It, I mean, despite that, despite that, yeah, despite the toxicity, maybe seeing how they are, yeah. they get to reflect, and mm-hmm. they become better people themselves. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, but, well, I mean, not to give anything away. But Skip like, a generation. That that latest episode of Moon Knight uh-huh. was pretty rough, man. Like, yeah. Especially the... like I mean, not I get not to give it away, but the fact that we find out how his whole mental situation Stability. Has, has to do with his mom. And yeah. It, I didn't expect that. That mm. was very shocking to me. Like, yeah. You know, and, and that's something that I don't think... He had to make his own way of, yeah. around it. Yeah. But that's something that I don't think that, like, like it, it, is it something that Disney would do? Then on a Marvel thing? You know, like... and It got pretty dark. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Moon Knight has always been that character where it's like, you know, it's very dark and very like it's about mental illness and all that. Yeah, that was a little a bit. Deep. That was a, that was deep, man. That yeah. was that was a hard one. And but a lot of people experience that in the world. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's a real thing. I but, was watching Tiger and Bunny, and there's a whole situation where the dad's an abusive to the mom, and the mom's like, yeah. "Oh no, he'll get better. He'll mm-hmm. get better." They put up with a lot. Yeah, as mothers, yeah. you know, and and it's hard. But, but I think again, not to get too much away, but I think like the position that they put his mom in. Uh-huh. Like traditionally, I feel like that would have been like the dad, you know what I mean? Like that would have been like something that they, the storytelling dad. wise, that would be like something the dad would do. Because dads are more violent. Yeah, 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 yeah more aggressive. More aggressive. And, yeah. and you're just like, and I think that's what I think that's why got me, man. I think it it, it just hit different. And like, oh, his mom was wow. His mom was rough. Uh, yeah, <laughs> rough. Yeah, not to spoil anything. Yeah, but I, I think that, and then. As a big fan of the character, like mm-hmm. I, I didn't see that coming. That was that was a that was a twist. What a twist! Yeah, that was, that was really good. Though. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, evil moms are evil, and yeah. it doesn't even matter at the end of the mm-hmm. day. It's like who they become is up to them at the end. And there's tons of other moms that there. There's unofficial moms like yeah. uh, like the moms that would take care of the Justice League, yeah, or, you yeah. know, the the, mm-hmm. the nannies and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, Ma Kunkel, Ma Kunkel you, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Yeah, step moms. Yeah. You know? You know, if you will. But I think that, I think it's storytelling too. There's this weird stigma about stepmoms. They're just like, you know, they're bad. They're all bad. <laughs> they're all bad. They're all they're, here to ruin my life. They're, they're replacing my mom. And yeah. Like, <laughs> but then you'll hear the story of the stepmom that stepped up yeah, and took yeah. care of the mm-hmm. kids instead of you know, yeah. not taking care of them at mm-hmm. all. The dad might be more of an asshole, mm-hmm. and the stepmom will be like, dude, have compassion. Yeah. You know. Like right now in the, in the Fantastic Four books. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, ben Ben Grimm, the thing he married his longtime girlfriend Alicia, Alicia. and he adopted a scroll and a Cree kid. Oh, that's two opposites. Yeah, and not only that, these 
they were they they rescued them from this like casino what? it's space casino thing because sure. the whole thing is that the complete battle history uh-huh. of the the scroll and the Cree are like embedded in these kids dna, DNA. and they they rescued them because basically they would have them fight and people would bet on them oh so it's like a fight club yeah oh man and these so, are little kids though yeah these are little kids and so freaking uh the Fantastic Four shut that down. Okay. And they took those kids, and they were just like, oh, we're taking these kids. Like, you know, this is horrible. Alicia Masters, it's the mom. Yeah. And so then Ben was like, let's take them in. Like, let's adopt them. Let's make them. And it's so, it's so freaking wholesome uh-huh. and kind of dark at the same time. <laughs> but because he, like, like the, the Cree kid, I forget uh-huh. his name, he, he's just very, he was very wild, right? Uh-huh. But then he listens to Ben because he's just like, oh, you're, the world famous, the universe famous thing. Ooh. Like you are, you know, a, a, a hero and like, mm-hmm. so you outrank me. So whatever you tell me <laughs> to do, I'm going to do, you okay. know? And the little school girl, she's just like, all right, whatever. Like, you know. <laughs> well, it's not the first time those have been parents. Earth X, they had no. the Brothers Grimm, yeah, remember? Brothers Grimm, yeah. She made them. She made them out of clay. Yeah, right? She yeah. made them out of yeah. clay. Yes, yes. And it, it, but it's such an interesting dynamic because Ben has never been the dad. He's always been, the, you know, the uncle. He's always been, you know. Yeah. And it's it just, it's interesting, man. But he's an uncle and a dad because yeah. he protects those kids like yeah. they were his own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I grew up with nothing but uncles yeah. and they were my dads, mm-hmm. all of them. And, and it's so funny too because the way that it's written, it's so well written. Where yeah. um, there's this whole little short story where the, the crease, his son, mm-hmm. took uh, an imaging inducer with him. Oh. Because Ben signed him up for school. Yeah. And so he made himself look human. And um, and Ben was like, "What are you doing? Like, well, why are you doing that?" And he's like, "Oh, you want me to go to school? I feel like it'd be easier for me to do this than yeah. you know than be a blue kid in the school." And he's just like, "Dude, I, I made out of rock. Like, I don't care what people <laughs> think about me. Mm-hmm. You just have to be who you are, yeah. you know." And I think, I think there's a great uh, just just prediction of that is he's telling him this, and in the background, there's these kids that are like, "Oh shit, it's the thing, run!" Mm. <laughs> right? Wow. <laughs> That's a two sides. Yeah, of, uh, you know, but, and it's just, and then he but he tells him he's like, no, like don't hide who you are. Like, yeah, you, just, you, know, you are who you are, and you know, accept it. Yeah, you know that's true. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Saying that, my mother always told me that yeah. you know, be who you are and mm-hmm. accept it. You know, whatever you do in life, make sure you do it well. Yeah, you know, no, definitely, you know, huh? But yeah, there's a lot of. It's interesting when you think about it. Like you know, like, like I think like father figures in comics are usually pretty screwed up yeah you know, like, like you got the professor xavier mm. and he's pretty shady he's really like he does a lot of sort of things he but, puts oh, memories in people yeah, yeah. yeah but then like the, the, the thing is the moms they feel like they're way more important than the other yeah and okay now the x-men yeah they don't have a mother figure not really you know they yeah. didn't have that you could say oh well gene green and sarm no yeah. they really no, weren't no. they were leaders yeah. sure but mm-hmm. they weren't really mothers yeah they weren't out there making breakfast mm-hmm. or anything like that. Yeah. I don't know who it was, but still. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and like recently, too, like in the comics, like they, they, you know, like in the, within the last five years or so, they uh-huh. made Superman and Lois have a kid. Oh, yeah. And now Lois Lane has to be mother a and mother. Re- and a reporter. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and the, the wife of freaking Superman. You know? Oh, like, let's it, not put that to the side. Like, <laughs> That's and, a lie. Yeah. And it, and, it was, and it was interesting because there, there was a great group that wrote the uh, Lil Zane book uh-huh. about two years ago. And this is before he, he outed himself, before he like revealed his identity to the world. And so she was out and about doing her thing, and he would go visit her. He, mm-hmm. Wherever she was, he'd fly over there and go have breakfast with her. Yeah. Or, and there's this one part where like she's walking through this, and, it, and it's very like it's, it's a metaphor for, for what's going on now politically and all that, right? Okay. And they, they show her and Clark walking through the streets and um, this guy wearing the red hat, right? Right. He fucking chews her out and he's just like, oh, you're a fucking liar. You're, you're talking shit about like Luther and blah, 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 blah. And, and then she's just like, whatever. She walks away and Clark's like, dude, like, what the, you know, like, yeah. do, do something. Mm-hmm. And she's like, why? Like, he just, you know, like, I'm not going to change his mind. Mm. That's just who he is. And like, you know. Smart. Yeah. And it, it was just. It, it was sad, but it was also like, oh man, like you know, it's not that she gave up, but she yeah. knows she went to pick her battles. You yeah. know, she knows she's not gonna win that battle. And, it, and, it, and it's interesting though because like you think about it, like that guy doesn't yeah. know she's married to Superman. No, yeah, you know what I mean, like yeah. and like 
and so the, that's why he he would do that, you know, like because mm-hmm. I think they showed that like like once Superman outed himself, like people were like, oh, those might like okay, <laughs> like, <I'm> like, <laughs> don't touch her, yeah, don't mess with her, you know? yeah, she's a mom too now, wow, and it, and it, and it, it's really they really push it right now because like, Superman's gone, he's 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 out doing this thing and he's he's missing and mm-hmm. and so there's some job that steps Superman. up and he's Superman, and now she's gonna deal with that, she's gonna deal with the fact that. Her son is Superman, mm-hmm. and he's not the Superman that Clark was. He's very proactive. He's mm-hmm. very like you know, Clark, he's involved. He's involved. And yeah, he's willing to get arrested mm-hmm. uh, to Pit- protest protesting. something that you know he believes in. Very true. Like he's picking fights with like these governments and shit. You know. Okay, and, that's like a lot of kids though nowadays. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. And so they they really made her this very modern mom, where like, mm-hmm. you know she knows that. This is just the life I live now, and I'm afraid mm-hmm. this, 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 something will happen to my kid, but I can't tell him not to do it. Right, you know? right. You know, it's very smart storytelling because it's like, it's like, how do you tell Superman uh-huh. to fucking step back? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, usually he's the guy in the front taking yeah. the bullets, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but chill out, dude. Yeah, she's got this. Yeah, and Lois is, but then you got to think about it. She's had this whole life where she's like, dealt with it on some level you know yeah well she's an adventure reporter yeah, right? yeah. but it, yeah, i think it's it let's give it a second okay. i think they're doing it on purpose i think so good <laughs> slow down guys yeah that's it all right cool all right so yeah what's yeah. your thing and i i think the other thing i love about that book is mm-hmm. like because she's lois lane like there's there's this whole part where like Batman shows up to to her apartment mm-hmm. and like he just like walks in right and she's <laughs> like no you don't do that you fucking go to the door like you knock on the door right <laughs> she put Batman on check yeah and then he's like I I know but it's an emergency <laughs> like, <I'm> like <laughs> no go around yeah. you know what I remember that because yeah. my friends would come to the window. Yeah. <laughs> And knock on the window mm-hmm. and be like, "Hey!" And my mom's like, "No, there's a door. Yeah. Use it." Yeah. Oh my goodness! And it's just, it's very cool, man. Like I, I'm really enjoying that book okay. a lot. You know, it's funny. Some mothers. I think it's funny because it's like John, his his boyfriend is is a guerrilla journalist. Like he's like you know, no. on the internet and he makes like, videos. And oh, and okay. it, but he's he's also like very like, oh, this is the truth. You know, this is we're not like he's not a conspiracy theorist, but he's basically like you know like. The mainstream media is telling you this, but this is what's really going on. He'll, he'll release videos and stuff like that, right? And there's this part where, like, he he introduces them. Uh, he introduces him to to his parents. Mm-hmm. At this point, everyone knows Clark Kent is Superman. Right. And then, uh, but he's more nervous to meet Lois Lane. Wow. And then, it's a hero, right? Like, it maybe. Yeah. And so then he's just like, wow. John's like, you know, like, most people are more nervous to meet my dad. And he's like, like oh, Clark Kent a good writer but this is low thing and he's like but it's just funny because he, he goes to like oh yeah Clark Kent's a good writer like no he's Superman <laughs> like, <you> know, like, <laughs> yeah the world knows yeah. you should know yeah. right but they're like but it's, it's just fascinating I mean I, I would I get it but like you know he's just more impressed with like Lois Lane well he's a reporter himself yeah. so yeah, yeah it makes yeah. some sense yeah okay but I, mm-hmm. yeah there's this whole low thing that it's a mom thing like I didn't know what to think about it at first uh-huh. but I, I freaking love it man. it's so good modern day moms yeah wow so that's that's gonna be probably it for yeah. right now mm-hmm. um thank you for being here uh, our next segment coming up we're gonna talk to a very special guest a very special lady we're gonna talk to our intern marisol's mom so stick around for that and i'll see you in a few but thank you for joining us again and here we are with a very special guest, since today is our Mother's Day episode. We have our good friend Marisol's mom in, in the studio today. Uh, Marisol, who you know, is from the Geeks of East LA. Uh, she's our unofficial official intern. And she was glad, happy, glad enough to lend us her mom for the evening. So would you mind saying hello? This is Maria, for those who know. Hello to everybody, and I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you very much for being here. And again with me is Pete. Hello, hello. And, well, let's start off with a bank. What is it like raising Marisol? Oh, my gosh. You know? It's been a crazy adventure. <laughs> That's all I can call it. A crazy adventure? I mean, yes. she told us a couple of stories, but I want to hear them from you. 
I mean, what was it like growing or having growing up uh, raising a child that was pretty nerdy? Yeah, well, Marisol was into everything. I mean, once she grabbed a hold of like a fandom, mm -hmm. she just wouldn't let go. Okay. And I think it started as her back. Um, I was a Scooby Doo fan, mm -hmm. so she picked up on that. Okay. But I mean, going into elementary school on their own when Digimon came out. Uh huh. Oh my goodness, that was everything. It was <laughs> a whole world. Oh wow. Okay, but you mentioned you like Scooby Doo. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what are you into? Let me ask you that. Oh, geez. Um, I'm into so many things. I like reading, so I like a lot of authors, like mm -hmm. J.R.R. Tolkien. Lord okay, of Lord of the Rings. Of nice. course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always um, loved my Saturday morning cartoons okay. that I grew up with, um, Justice League, um, Scooby-Doo, Legion of Doom. So kind of you consumed all this media weekly then because it sounds like it's Saturday morning cartoons that comes out once a week back then. Yes, back then we had to suffer for <laughs> six days to get to Saturday morning. Okay. Yes. Well, um, what do you remember about those days growing up? Oh, geez. About those days. Yeah. Um, like in school, it's all the kids would talk about. Okay. That Saturday morning cartoon that we would all wait for mm. so eagerly on Saturday. And from about 7 in the morning till about 11, there'd be new episodes of mm. just so many different cartoons. And these were brand new cartoons at the time. <laughs> new episodes. Okay. And that caught your attention. And, and obviously, that's how you made friends, right? Oh, yeah. That's how we, you know, talking about all the cartoons and stuff. We made mm. friends at school. Mm. And it just carried on to my girls. Then did you ever get any sort of like pushback from people saying, oh, you've watched cartoons and stuff like that? You know? No, because no? in elementary school, that was everything. That was everything? <laughs> yeah. What about growing up later on, like in high school and junior high? Did you still continue watching cartoons? Um, Not really, not anymore, because that wasn't a cool thing to do anymore. Oh, but I mean, really. you had such a good time when you were young. What yeah. made you stop? Just, I don't know. I, th I think I switched to books Oh. by that time. And then um, since this was like the early 80s, um, that was like the birth of video games. Oh. So you stopped talking about cartoons, and now it was all about video games. Video games. So you game also? Uh, no, not really. No? I, it just never caught on with me, okay. but Did you try it everybody out? else around me was all about the video games. Okay. So, so you know, for dad too, video games. Video games, video games. <laughs> okay. But did you ever waste a couple quarters? If so? Oh, yeah, I did. Pac-Man. Okay. Joust. And, you know. Oh, cool. <laughs> Galaxy, Galaga. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you were into a lot of nerdy stuff then. Yes, I was. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, that's cool. I mean, did you ever collect comic books? Uh, not comic books. Just regular books and Just stuff? Just books. Okay. It was, it was books for me. Okay. What besides our our what else were you into? Uh, movies. <laughs> movies. You mentioned silent films off like a, a little while ago. Oh yeah, I did. I loved uh, silent films since the first time I saw them. I think I was very young. My parents used to take me to the double features, okay. and it was usually like the main feature and the 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 lower the second movie. I think would always be like a silent film. Oh, that's interesting. So I think I got my love. For my parents. What were your favorite characters of the movies and stuff like that? Oh, geez. Um, it was usually like the horrors. <laughs> <laughs> Dracula. Okay. The werewolf. Oh, really? Yeah, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Like that in itself is more nerdy. <laughs> yeah, you are <laughs> yeah. definitely have your nerd card set. That is awesome. Um, okay, um, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, as kids grow up, Mm -hmm. They tend to leave, like you left in the nerd cartoons and you moved to books. Yeah. Did you ever think about, I'm going to stop all this? You know, I'm not going to ever be doing this again? Uh, no, no, I never thought of it. I was just interrupted, let's uh, say. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I got married, had kids. Okay. So I never no. decided to stop. It just happened. But then as they started growing up and started, you know, watching TV mm -hmm. and asking me, Mom, what are you reading? And Okay. It just kind of was re reborn. Yeah, you could share it with, I, with them now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I shared it with them, and they took it by storm, though. Yeah. They grabbed it and ran. You ran planted the it. seed in yeah, there. Yeah, I planted <laughs> the seed, and now, you know, they enjoy it so much more than I do. They develop their own ways of doing things, right? Like being obsessive for Digimon, being obsessive with different kinds of cartoons. Yes. Okay. Having said that, when you think back at the times that you were, maybe I shouldn't have done that? Uh-huh. 
you think ever I shouldn't have showed him that I shouldn't have done anything like that oh no no <laughs> no never that's beautiful okay I was always glad to share my love of movies and books and films and everything okay. with them that's you could sometimes it skips a generation uh -huh. you know sometimes a parent will be really nerdy and the kid will be real serious yeah. you know have you ever seen that before <laughs> I've seen that happen yeah yeah and then, unfortunately, the next generation after that will be as nerdy as a grandpa. Exactly. I've seen that happen, yeah. too. <laughs> what do you think that attributed to? I don't know. I think that for those people, when they become parents, they push everything aside. And they think, no, mm. you know, there's no time or space no. for this. Okay. You know, it's not something for my kids. Yeah. But, but I always wanted to share. See, a lot of the people don't. A lot of people are like, no, this guy needs to be better than me. He needs to grow up to be a doctor or a lawyer or something. So, yeah, they push away all they their push it, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, they push it away. And I never did that. I wanted them to have something besides that, mm -hmm. the school and all mm -hmm. that serious stuff. Something they can enjoy and just kind of relax and chill and get their mind off of the world Yeah. for a little bit. Oh, okay. That's beautiful. I like that, by the way. Yeah. Um, what do you think happens in the other way around? Where the parents are serious, the kids are nerdy, and they don't want them to be. Oh, I think that's a disaster. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have to have a good uh, balance. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have to have a balance of both. You know, oh, yeah. the love of school, because I do. I love school and education. Okay. But you need to be able to balance that with something that will just free your mind. Okay. You know, watching a good movie, reading a comic book. Mm -hmm. You know, watching a cartoon. Yeah, as simple as that, half yeah, an hour, it's right? Just half an hour. I mean, that. Do you think that releases stress? Oh, definitely. Okay. It does, especially nowadays with mm -hmm. so much going on. You yeah. need it. Okay. You need that to keep you sane. <laughs> Is that why you think a lot of people that grow up and well, grew up watching still do nowadays? You know, they relieve themselves with a cartoon or something nerdy like a, a Lord of the Rings movie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because, you know, it takes me out of the here and the now and it mm -hmm. puts me in a, in a place mm -hmm. where I don't have to think nice. you know, yeah. about my world no, around me. Mm -hmm. And like her dad, you know, he has an illness, mm -hmm. but when he's dealing with pain or, or mm -hmm. what does he do? He puts on anime. Oh. Yeah. So it helps him, you know, not to be in the moment of pain or because he's watching anime. I like that. It helps him. It helps him. With the pain. With the pain. You can ask the girls. Yeah. And it does help them to not think of pain or being sick at all. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that little escape, you know. It's yeah. escape. You know, I, I, we talk about it all the time, how mm -hmm. we have the same people come every week. And they look yeah. forward to it. I think that's part of it. I think it's part of, you know, that little escape. Mm. You know? It's, it's a, like a, to him, I, it's a therapy. It's a therapy. Yeah, it's very therapeutic. And it's pain management. Mm -hmm. And it's a stress reliever. A distraction. And it's and everything. It's, yeah. And then for me, too, I can get away from that, too, at home. by like Reading a book mm -hmm. or watching an old movie. Mm -hmm. or, you know. And do you guys, like, hang out together and watch the cartoons and watch the movies together? Yeah, sometimes we do. Yeah? Not all the time. We all have different tastes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he likes more of the, you know, gore and the really <laughs> heavy. And I don't. Mm -hmm. so. But well, there are things we share. <laughs> like what? Um, like the very old timey cartoons okay. that we'll share, um, like Disney movies mm -hmm. that that's universal though. That's yeah. universal. Yeah. So th those things we can we can share. We can we combine all our tastes. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna <laughs> step in here. Oh, can they hear me? <laughs> Please, your two cents. Uh, my parents have watched all the Marvel movies together and not invited us, but they watch them together. Oh, <laughs> oh that's right. Those are our favorites to watch. Really. <laughs> So, I mean, you never see them in the comic books, but you know them by the movies, I right? I know them by the movies, mm -hmm. and everybody else, I think, it's comic books first, right? For the most part. Yeah. There's a lot of people that just see the movies, and that's all yeah. they know. But, I mean, how did you enjoy, enjoy those? Just oh, I love them. Really? I don't know their full stories mm -hmm. or backgrounds, mm -hmm. but just within, within the movies, we were able to sit and share and just, you know, that two hours mm -hmm. was awesome yeah. from each movie. <laughs> Which one's your favorite one? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Put you on the I spot there. I can't even tell you. Uh, one of the final ones, Infinity War. <laughs> Infinity War? Yeah, okay. Probably, I, I think. <laughs> what happened in that one? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> everybody gets beat up. <laughs> All right. In that case, you're right. <laughs> That's the most I could say, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's the current way of the stuff that is now. 
um, what do you think would help people, like some advice, I guess you would say, to parents dealing with nerdy children growing up? You know, <laughs> like you're dealing with nerdy dealing, I mean, <laughs> dealing. I mean, what else would you say with you know? Oh, I, you know I don't. I don't want to be mean about it, but I mean. I think the best thing they could do is to step into their world, mm. oh. even just a little bit. Yeah. And ask, ask, hey, what's that? What are you watching? Mm -hmm. What are you reading? Okay. Tell me a little bit about it. Okay. Something about it might just yeah. hook you. No, oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, and you can just share. I got. I was telling. Bit. I was telling him earlier. Uh, my my dad was a big sports guy. He played every sport in high school. So we're like the complete opposite. <laughs> uh, and um, one year when the, the Man of Steel movie came out, uh -huh. my, my sister was working at Warner Brothers and they had a Father's Day screening. And we went to go watch it. And when I drive back, he said, oh, yeah, I remember when the Christopher Reeves Superman movie came out. Me and your mom camped out. And I thought to myself, that's the nerdiest thing about my dad that I never knew. <laughs> so that's a shock to you. Yeah, it was a total shock to me. Yeah. Have you ever camped out for anything? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> think so. Well, the only things we've stood in long lines for is to get author mm. signings at the Festival of Books when my girls were young. Yeah, their favorite authors with their book in hand, and we would <laughs> wait in long lines, and it's so worth it. Yeah, mm. it's just to see the smiles, to see and... them happy, and yeah. make me happy, and we're in the moment, and we're together sharing that. It's amazing and you keep that here right of course those yeah. memories you know nobody could take that from me that's that's what it's all about yeah i mean when you had children did you think my kid is going to be a nerd oh no 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 because i don't know the girls are a handful enough yeah well well now you have them and my mom in. ended up with three boys <gasps> really? yeah my mom ended up with me and my two brothers and <laughs> raising us alone so yeah oh yeah gosh. yeah i'm sorry for all the heartache i gave her but you know yeah. she did a good job regardless you know we're yeah, still with her she did. so we're still backing her you know she's still mom Aww. so i mean thank you for everything my mom actually used to sell the vaquero revistas i don't remember those those yeah. little thick uh, yeah, those, those little ones magazines that... They used to call them novel novelas. novelarias. Yeah. My mom. Yeah. She was hooked on them. My mom too. She would sell them off the Soto and um, wow. when now Cesar Chavez, there used to be a little booth there, a little green one. I know where that. My yeah. parents live around, around there. That's yeah. That's my neighborhood. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, in that one, I she used, used to sell it. Buy magazines there. There, you wow. might have met my mom. That must have been your mom. Yeah, she used to sell for a good period of time, and when they came over. And a bunch of magazines. Yeah, magazines, and revistas, magazines. and all that. Yeah. And she would bring those home. And I, I didn't know what they were, but they had, like, you know, art that was, like. I oh. like the artwork. Yeah. <laughs> that I remember, all yeah. the different artwork. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, I do. It, it was always, like, it was very comic booky. Yeah. That, that art. And those were the papyrisa. Huh? You had a bunch of those. My dad? I think so. The novella ones. I remember like, seeing like little the covers would be so dramatic. Yeah. 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 My mom, my, my mom or one of them had them, yeah. Um, and Mexico too. Oh my family. No worries. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean, I like I said, my mom was not really supportive of me with the comic book stuff. Uh -huh. But like she had her own history with it. Was, that's kind of comic book too. Yeah, she had her own history with it. Yeah. Not just that, in Mexico, uh my uncle he used to also sell outside of the theater. He would rent comic books to people. Oh my god! Yeah, he would rent them out to them, and then he he sell some and stuff. But that was his job at the time to make extra money. Uh, my really? Really? Yeah. So you had the you had that seed planted in also. Yeah. From seeing stacks of novelas with my mom okay. and then the grandparents' comic books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where do you go from there? Um, well, there was being told a story about Donald Duck, and I want you to retell that story. <laughs> oh, why so had to mention it? <laughs> yeah, it's a great story. Pretty much, Donald Duck is her dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what my husband claims. <laughs> hey, if he says so, I mean. <laughs> Oh, Tell well. me a little bit about that. Why is he the dad of my soul? <laughs> well, so mm -hmm. I'm 
back in the 80s, and I think anybody as old as I am would remember Grad Night at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. um, there were characters spread out throughout the park. Right. So as a, a couple, we would get to take our pick of a character and take a picture mm -hmm. with them to take home. And uh, for my grad night, which was in 1986, mm -hmm. um, we got our pictures taken with Donald Duck. Nice. And according to my husband, Donald Duck, he put his arm around my waist mm -hmm. and then he pulled me a lot closer to Ooh. him. To him. <laughs> mm. So now my husband says that Donald Duck is... Uh, was there My photographic and... evidence apparently? Oh, it's at home. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I have the photo. Yeah. So, uh, do you guys ever visit her dad every once in a while? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We just went for the Halloween. Oh, cool. The haunted Halloween night. Nice. And we saw Donald Duck in the parade. So, she waved to him <laughs> as he passed. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Bye, Dad. Bye, Dad. Send the check and send the alimony check. Uh, that would be nice. Right. <laughs> Some of that Disney money. Yeah. I mean, he's in the Navy, but he doesn't make a lot of money. A lot of that's true. <laughs> but he's working for Disney. Oh, that's true. You know, he's got to make something. <laughs> Oh my God! So yeah, that's a good story, and I, and I, to me, that made me laugh the first time I heard it because I, I didn't really make sense out of it, but I was like, all right, I'm gonna have her tell me the story because I need to know what what this is all about. Um, so I, I'm at this point, we've discussed um, nerdiness, we've discussed growing up, we discussed a little bit of advice. It's hard to raise kids nowadays, regardless, but r raising them to in a world like this, it's mm -hmm. it's hard, and having that nerdiness, that outlet, like you said, that minute makes the difference. If you were to go back, would you change anything? Oh, no. No. I would not. Nothing. 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 I just, I like my nerdiness and my <laughs> fandoms, and I'm glad the girls have theirs. Mm -hmm. You know, it just helps them to deal a little bit more okay. with this world. Yeah, exactly. It helps them to decompress and just oh, yeah, stay, definitely. you know, mm -hmm. feet planted on the ground. Yeah, it's coming. I think it's funny too because we he asked you about when you were in high school about if you continue watching cartoons. He said like, "Oh, I don't, I didn't do that anymore because it wasn't cool no. anymore." I think it's crazy because now in our the world we live in now, it's cool to do that. <laughs> you know, oh, like you know, like it's very you know. Everyone. Well, the cartoons are more grown up now, though. Yeah. 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 Do you yeah ever they're see... more geared to adults. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Adventure Time, Steven Universe, and yeah. stuff like that. Do you ever watch any of those, the newer ones? Actually, not the newer ones. Mm -hmm. They don't attract my attention as much as okay. you know Scooby Doo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, because I mean some of the newer cartoons talk a little more serious about situations and stuff like that. Like sexuality, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Current Bullies events. current mm -hmm. events. And then these kids absorb that and then they right. see it in the real world and it's hard not to be influenced by it. Right. And mm -hmm. then by watching those, they're not even escaping. Yeah. Yeah, it I puts more the worry. Reality yeah. of that, mm -hmm. you know. I yeah. watched cartoons so that I wouldn't have to <laughs> be in the world for that little while. Yeah, because there was, uh, I can say, there was there there was no real lessons to be learned in cartoons back then. There was just a good time. Most of them, yeah, they were yeah. just pretty much a good time. Yeah, because Scooby Doo, you, and... you would find the villain at the end, and you'd go through the adventure and, and mask him at the end, and that was yeah. it, right? Yeah, every it was week. A beginning and an end. Yeah. and everything always ended well. Yeah, end of story. Now yeah. it's like, oh, it's this big episodic, crazy story. Right, you know? and it's not always a happy ending. It's not always it's a happy not ending. Not a happy ending. That's very much true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if you're watching like GI Joe, and it's like, you know. Look both ways before you cross the street. <laughs> well, they had to add that. Remember yeah. that? You know, well, they did that a lot mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. At the end of, of episodes, cartoons, mm -hmm. there would be a message yeah. about how to get along, how to be a good citizen. Yeah. yeah. How to, you know. But the thing is, they had to add those. They had to because the 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 stories themselves would be violent. They'd be you know people shooting at each other, like GI okay. Joe and all that. Um, they'd be wrestling big guys and muscles. So they had to add something to make it valuable that, for the kid, right. you know, right. you know? Right. that's where the lesson came in yeah i guess at the end at the end things. of the cartoon did you ever watch gi joe i think i watched a few few not, not too many yeah, okay not too many but some some okay. what else was there back in the what else did you like um what i can remember just from saturday would be just the superheroes scooby-doo superheroes and then there were some cartoons that were a little bit older than that. There was the, like Johnny Quest. Oh. Um, Sabrina. The Teenage and the Witch. The Groovy Ghoulies. Uh huh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, from the early 60s. 
The Groovy Ghoulies. The Groovy Ghoulies. I love that. That's good stuff. Yeah. They look really cool. Very hip. Well, your girl here, she likes Ghostbusters. Did you ever watch that original Ghostbusters back in the day where they had the gorilla in it? I don't remember. That was around the 60s, 70s also, I think. I might have, yeah. and I don't remember. Okay. No, no, no. I'm just asking. Because that was, again, pre-Ghostbusters, this Ghostbuster, yeah. you know? Have you watched the new Ghostbuster? No, I haven't. No? Just the original from the 80s. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I usually... You know, st stay away from the remakes. Okay. I don't know if I've seen the original. That's enough. <laughs> that's all. Just like we mentioned Star Wars before, mm -hmm. I've seen the first three. But okay. That's it. <laughs> so no Phantom, no none of the new. None of that. No. None of the prequel ones. None of that. No. no. Who's your favorite character in Star Wars? Um, I can't say I have a favorite. Mm -hmm. I just like the whole oh franchise as like the group. Oh. I can't imagine one character without the other. Oh. You know, like C-3PO without R2-B2. It makes no sense, right? Or any one of them without Darth Vader. You have to have a good bad guy. Yeah, a good bad guy like you that. You know, you can't have Thor without Loki mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so on. Thor and Loki. You have to have a, an interesting villain. Is, is Loki interesting to you? Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, wow. He's amazing. <laughs> have you seen the Loki show? Yes, I did. Did you enjoy that? I enjoyed it, but I didn't like where it went. Oh, with Loki. With Loki, which I Loki? liked him as a villain. Oh, and in the show, he was not. He was. He kind of yeah redeemed himself. Mm -hmm. Let's say okay. I want the villain back. <laughs> well, I, and that when you had like twenty thousand Lokis of, and then there was a group that was just nothing but villains. That, that was an interesting concept there. Mm -hmm. The multiverse. Yeah, of... the multiverse with all those Lokis interacting. Mm -hmm. I love that. But I still like him as a villain. As a villain. As a villain. Well, my favorite one was a President Loki. I think that's the most villainous one out of all of them. <laughs> Wasn't he amazing? Yeah. Because he was a villain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you believe in the multiverse? Do I believe in it? Yeah, the possibility there's another version of you out too that I has think... three boys instead of three girls. <laughs> I think somewhere out there, yeah. yeah. I mean, I love Doctor Who, so oh. why not? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Doctor Who. <laughs> really? Uh -huh. Well, you could talk to this guy yeah, about Doctor yeah. Who. I, I, I've tried to justify getting a, a life size TARDIS in the store. Why? <laughs> I've why been not? trying to figure it out. <laughs> convince him. If you convince him, we can get one. Oh no, I want to do it. Uh -huh. I need to justify like, oh, it's for something. Like it just, I just can't just do it. It's for just, it's cool. There you go. <laughs> Done. We're getting it. It's Maybe. Cool. Yeah, Doctor Who makes sense to me. <laughs> really? See, to me, it it confuses me sometimes. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, I I grew up watching them on on every once in a while, uh -huh. but it was those old Doctor Who's, yeah. Yeah. and I didn't get them in order, so I didn't know what was going half the time, what was going on half the time. You know. But, I mean, if you like Doctor Who, I mean, and you understand it, yeah. I, I don't know why. I think I'm just a little bit slow with that. I think the, <laughs> the older Doctor Whos mm -hmm. didn't explain how, how one episode mm -hmm. tied into another yeah. or the whole, okay. like, the multiverse mm -hmm. type. And the newer Doctor Whos after Doctor Number 9, mm -hmm. it made more sense. It flowed. Yeah. It was more uh, serialized. It was more, yeah. okay. it all tied together. Well, I remember one had a, had a flute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, he has a flute. What does it do? Uh, it does everything. <laughs> it does everything. Yeah, it was very much like, like like the way the Simpsons did were like, they would reference back to each other. Uh -huh. Right. But the beginning of the episode, everything like went back to zero. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. so like nothing really like mattered as far as like uh, country. <laughs> See, that's confusing. Oh, yeah. I don't know. All right. See, again, that's confusing to me. That's probably, you start with number nine mm -hmm. and, and just go from there. Yeah. Go from there and it, it will make sense, yeah. I promise. I think I did try, but again, it was like the doctor was bad. I think it was number nine, wasn't it? Yeah. He was kind of, it was complicated. Yeah, it was See? complicated, but he was just re, you know, reborn. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's out of the newer ones, the war doctor is still my favorite mm -hmm. because that one's, you know, the villain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he was the villain. In so, the yeah. But he was still a doctor. He yeah. was still a doctor, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. I don't know much about him, but that's all I know. I, I enjoyed that guy. You should try it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll do. Um, doctor Who. I didn't, I didn't. I would never picture Doctor Who out of you. Yes. Yeah. I'm oh. a big fan of that, too. <laughs> See? The more we dig, the more we find. You know? Um, what else? What other TV shows do you gravitate towards? 
Oh my goodness. This is um, where your nerdiness, your eccentricity nerdiness, comes out. Yeah. Like, like shows. Korean dramas. I Korean love dramas. Korean dramas. And uh, they're weird game shows. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Which usually don't have subtitles. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing <laughs> when it's game shows. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> I enjoy what, them anyway. Like, why did you do that? Who knows? That was great. It was great, right? Oh, man. <laughs> As far as Korean dramas, do you gravitate more toward those like ancient Korean stories or more towards the newer ones like where it's all heartbreak and stuff oh, like no, that? Oh, no, no, no. I love the historical ones. Yeah. Those are, I, I did watch all the, you know, current ones, yeah. you know, set in the here and the now, but mm -hmm. I prefer the yeah, history. Yeah, the here and the now ones, they're just too much about love, though. They are. You they're know? very, uh... Yeah, I like those old ones where like, oh, you came into my land? I am going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, because it was, you know, they're basically... um cut and dry black and white mm -hmm. follow the rules don't yeah. break the rules and yeah that's it okay so. yeah yeah so I mean, we used to watch those like when we were in the mm -hmm. newspaper before uh -huh. we would turn that on and just leave it on the background mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we just get gravitate towards it and we just be there instead of doing work because yeah it just draws you in yeah it and it's funny because sometimes we, there will be no subtitles if you pay attention and you kind of like I know what they're talking yeah. about. Like you kind of figure it out. You can figure it out, yeah. right? It's like, oh, that guy's mad. Yeah. How do you know he's mad? You just hear what he's told him. <laughs> yeah, no, those are good. I mean, we had a phase, I guess. Yeah. You know. They're worth watching. Yeah. Well, it was in, in high school, right? We watched uh, Dragon Ball in Spanish. Oh yeah. Because it was the only way you could watch it was uh, some channel from Mexico. Yeah, right? channel twelve at oh. three thirty after school. We'd run home just to watch it in Spanish. <laughs> watch it. Yeah. Some days it wouldn't even work, but we would be there watching yeah. it. <laughs> what about anime? Let's get into that. Do you like anime? You oh, said your husband likes it, but do my you? My husband watches it every day. Okay. Every day he doesn't miss. <laughs> but there aren't too many that I, I can sit and watch. Okay. I don't. That's his thing, so I leave him to it. Okay. <laughs> you know, just like when I turn on my Korean, <laughs> they all walk away. That's my thing. <laughs> That's the one thing I can call my own. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So I leave him to his anime so he can enjoy it on his own. So yeah, so. Concentrate. But you still watch it with him, right? Um, you know, picking out from the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can catch a little bit here and there. Okay. I was going to ask you what your favorite one is, but I guess I not really have one. Uh, no, I don't. Not in anime. I don't. Okay. Um, we've what, covered movies. We've covered books. We've covered... What else, have we, what else? What are we missing? What else can you tell us about yourself that we won't know? Oh my goodness, I, I don't know. What has Marisol told you? Oh. <laughs> mm. but what hasn't she told? <laughs> That's pretty much what we want to know. It's like we're, we're having, um, my love of books. It's mm -hmm. always been my number one thing. I mm -hmm. mean, if I could drop everything, mm -hmm. you know, or you know, they say if your house was on fire, what would you rescue? Right? Mm -hmm. It would be my photographs and my pile of books. <laughs> <laughs> not the movies, no. not any. Not your kids. Not, <laughs> none, of that. <laughs> not, not, none of that. Just my books. Okay. Books is number mm -hmm. one for me. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, you, what are you reading right now? Uh, right now, I haven't actually gotten to the library. Mm -hmm. They've been closed mm -hmm. right. for more than two years. Yeah. And that for me was heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. So, I haven't been able to to go but i just i usually go back to what i've always read okay my charles dickens and the jrr tolkien mm -hmm. i can just when you have your favorites oh you reread them a lot? i reread yeah oh okay because yeah. a lot of people just read and drop and they say okay i read it that's and it that, no i can revisit them over and over okay when, you know i love them that much so. it's, it's like visiting an old friend yeah it is it oh. is it's just that comfort mm -hmm. you know Beautiful, awesome. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add? No, I think uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I just right. want to ask about an embarrassing Marisol story. <laughs> Can we ask about an embarrassing Marisol story? Anything? Do you know anything, or you just want me to spill? <laughs> just something, anything. Well, earlier she mentioned dropping out of what did she say? Oh, uh, you get, you get kicked out of preschool, right? Getting kicked out of preschool. Oh, why? I, okay, this sounds juicy. Give me one second. Let me sit down, right? Sure. Uh, how, she got a kicked out of preschool? Oh, well, no, she didn't. Um, my husband pulled her out before she could get kicked out. Of <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, how'd that happen? Uh, well, I guess she was always too smart for her own good, but. Um, oh. When she was in preschool, 
you know, it's they teach you the basics, right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, here, trace the circle mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. triangle and the, and here, trace your name. Her argument was, Mom, I already know how to do that. <laughs> so she would switch her papers with whichever kid, I guess, was next to her. She would try to erase their name what the? and try to put her own mm -hmm. and give it to the teacher saying, I'm done. And it wasn't her work. <laughs> it was that other kid's work. <laughs> So, I mean, if she would know how to do it, then why should she just do it? She didn't. She says, it's boring. Wow. I already know how. So why she, am I here? Wow. So, one day, she decided to leave. The school? She, yeah, she did. And she actually, <laughs> they caught her, and she was, it was a little preschool, which was in, inside of a park area uh -huh. with the swings and all the, mm -hmm. you know, all the dirt and the sandboxes. And they went and they found her out by the sandbox. What the? That's dangerous. Yeah, but she decided to do it. She was so bored with it that yeah, she, she was so bored that <laughs> she left, and no one noticed. Left. No, not till she was gone when they noticed that she was missing, what? and they found her in the park. What? I mean, I, granted, the park was right next to the school, but yeah. I mean, that could have gone and sideways. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned they you took her out before she got the... yeah well my husband chewed out a few people because they didn't notice she was missing yeah, yeah, they good. didn't call him mm -hmm, or good. anything All right so he said she she wasn't going back okay I mean that's no reason to expel her in the first place but I mean I'm glad they did you guys put her like in a separate school like a magnet school or like a gifted school or anything after... like that after that no I just kept her at home I kept so, her home. You know, she turned five and then she went to kindergarten. Okay. And then at that school, you know, I had to do my part and make sure she didn't leave. So <laughs> I volunteered a lot. Yeah. Oh, just to keep an eye on her? Keep an eye on the child. Oh, my God. <laughs> but yeah. That's pretty bad. That's pretty, okay. That's pretty embarrassing. I hope she enjoys that going on the air. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Um, I want to thank you for being on the show today. Um going to come out on mother's day so oh, thank you goodness. yeah that's exactly why i wanted to have you on because you are the nerdiest mother i've met so far well thank you and i've enjoyed this very much i'm so happy you invited me thank you very much i'm happy mother's day to all the moms of this <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> and with that i would like to thank our very special guest marisol's mom for being with us today maria thank you very much it was quite interesting and very entertaining getting to know you I hope we get to meet each other again sometime. And thanks to Pete here for letting me record again in his in his humble abode, nostalgic. And next week, we might change the gears a little bit. We might not. I still haven't decided. So if you want to see what we have cooked up next week, just come back. And we'll show you something you might or might not know. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of the whatever day you're having. And... Bye.